offer you some 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 images from the main stratigraphic units that you see uh, crossing the Devonian Carboniferous boundary in Perlis. Um, also, I also will sh uh, talk about the, the the types of changes you'll see in the fossil composition uh, when we go through the different stratigraphic units and when we cross the Devonian Carboniferous boundary. Okay, and uh, at the end. Uh, I'll try to just synthesize everything together. I right? try to connect uh, stratigraphy to global sea level change or any any climate change that was happening uh, during the mid Paleozoic. Okay, so just a, I'll start with an overview of the geology of Perlis. If you are not familiar with Perlis State. It is uh, on the northwest. It is the northwestern most state uh, of Peninsular Malaysia, bordering southern Thailand. Okay, and it's a very small state, just a few tens of kilometers long to a few tens of kilometers wide. All right, but despite its very small size, it preserves a, re a very good record of the Paleozoic history of Peninsular Malaysia. A relatively continuous succession going from the Ordovician up to the Permian. And that is only on mainland. If you consider the rocks in Langkawi, the, the geologic record actually ranges from Cambrian until to the Permian. Okay, at least for the, uh, for the um, Paleozoic rocks. All right. Uh, and these rocks uh, are relative well, uh, relatively well preserved. They are still uh, sedimentary rocks. No evidence of strong uh, regional metamorphism. Uh, they are far away enough from the main range granites, so not much in terms of contact metamorphism, at least uh, maybe a little bit in, in, in northern part. And also, the tectonic, uh, tectonic deformation is not really, it's relatively not that complex compared to other parts of uh, Peninsular Malaysia. So what you have is a fold belt, generally, uh, with uh, your layers striking uh, north, north, west, south, south, east. So forming these north-south trending uh, ridges, yeah, which, which form uh, yeah mountain ranges and also uh, 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 hills, okay, uh, around around the state, okay. Uh, I'll, I'll go through the uh, stratigraphic units one by one later on, okay. Okay, so but my focus is just on the rocks which are Devonian to Carboniferous in age, yeah, for for this talk, okay. Uh, and when we talk about that, uh, we'll cover three main stratigraphic units. First, you have the Sertol group, which is carbonate dominated. Now, if you read uh, the older literature, uh, you, you might have come, uh, you have met with the term Sertol limestone. So this is the same thing. All right. Uh, it was just in, I think it was in 2009, uh, the, uh, there was a suggestion to uh, up, upgrade it to, uh, to group status. Right. So when we update, upgrade to group status, we have several uh, formations inside it, uh, which includes uh, the Ordovician Kaki Bukit limestone, uh, the Silurian Mempelam limestone, uh, and also uh, the most recent uh, limestone unit discovered, the Sanai limestone. And intercalated between these uh, limestones, you have these thin units of black shales. Okay. Uh, from the, the older literature calls them the detrital members. Like the lower detrital member and the upper detrital member from Perlis and also in Langkawi, right? Uh, but yeah, I'm I'm using uh, newer names here. I'm calling the upper detrital member the Timataso formation in this case. All right. So I'll also be covering uh, Carboniferous rocks, which includes uh, the Telaga Jato formation. Some people call it the base of a Kubang Pasu formation, and also the the yeah the early Carboniferous Clastics of the Kuban Pass formation called where I call them the Chepo member. All right. Okay. So uh, to help you image every uh, visualize everything where the rocks are, right? So I have some uh, aerial photos taken from a drone. Okay. So this is a view facing towards the west. Okay. Towards the Straits of Malacca in this direction. Uh, I have an arrow pointing towards the north here. And uh, you can see the you have the Seto range here, the Seto boundary range, okay, or the Nakawan range eh, at, at the back here. 
And this is made up of all the vision to Devonian age covenant. So this is, this is the settled group. Okay, I put the age here to help you uh, visualize uh, how, how much uh, time are we talking about? We're talking when we're going from the Ordovician up to the Permian. And the, the lowland part area here is the classic dominated area. And this is the Kubang Pasu formation, uh, which ranges from the Carboniferous to the Permian. Okay, so this is the uppermost part of uh, the Kubang Pasu formation here. Uh, so you have a relatively small exposure of the topmost uh, beds of the, uh, of the Kubang Pasu formation. Okay. So yeah, uh, our beds are striking roughly north, northwest, south, southeast. Okay. So just another photo in a different direction now. Okay. So this is the view towards the north, towards Thailand here. All right. And still, again, you can see the settled group on in, in the west here. Okay. And notice the body of water here. This is the part of the Timataso Dam. Eh? We have a water reservoir there. And all this is Kubang Pasu Formation, which is in conformable contact with the Permian Chuping Limestone on this side. All right. So relatively continuous sedimentary succession we, we get in, in, in Perlis. But uh, in terms of... Uh, Context between stratigraphic units, uh, the contact between Devonian and Carboniferous rocks it has been a little bit problematic. It's very hard to understand the contact between uh, the Devonian and the Carboniferous. Okay, uh, doesn't mean that we don't have exposures of the Devonian Carboniferous boundary. We have several Devonian Carboniferous boundary candidates in Perlis and also in North Kedah, but most of them display deformed contacts. Okay. So just an example here. This is from Perlis near the Timataso Dam. Uh, this uh, has been named Guatsanai Hill C. All right. And you get a contact between Devonian and Carboniferous rocks. You have black shales at the bottom. Uh, lots of graptolites and tentaculites. Tells you it's early Devonian in age. Uh, but then it is uh, sharply overlain by strongly deformed, strongly folded, in this case overturned, Kubang Pasu formation, uh, sandstones and mudstones. And you have in some places patches of strongly folded earliest Carboniferous rocks, which are chirts eh, of, of the Tlagajato formation. And it seems that these have been strongly deformed. Eh? Uh, we think this is because of tectonic deformation. All right. Um, another, ex uh, another outcrop showing the Devon and Carboniferous boundary is at Utan Aji in Perlis. Okay. And here again, you get a graptolite bearing Timataso formation at the bottom inside the black shales. It is sharply overlain by, again, by early Carboniferous church and then overlain by the Kubang Pasu formation at the top. But just like Guasanai, lots of structural complications. It's very, it was very hard to, to map these outcrops especially when the outcrop is very limited in size. Right? So it took us a long time to figure out things, right? Uh, a few more examples of a Devonian Carboniferous boundary. This is also, Guats uh, sorry, this is Guatsana Hills A. Okay, so that, that, that's my wrong there. Uh, so yeah, here you get uh, Silurian carbonates at the bottom, overlain by Devonian black shales again, then a sharp contact between uh, the Tumataso formation and the Kubang Pasu formation. Okay. Also, another Devonian Carboniferous boundary outcrop is in Langkawi in Pulau Langun. So this, I think, this is one of the better known examples. Uh, uh, lots of published work here, right? Uh, but again, uh, complex uh, tectonic deformation results in you know it's very poor understanding of the actual contact between the two. Some, uh, if you read the literature. Some people say that the contact is unconformable. Some say that the contact is conformable. Uh, it might even be a fault contact be, um, between the Devonian Carboniferous. Okay, our problem is mainly because of the extent of the outcrops, not, not much in terms of exposure. Now, enter the uh, Guatsanai Hill B outcrop. Okay, uh, it is located just southwest of the Timataso Dam. Okay, so it is an earth quarry, and 
this outcrop is very special in my opinion because we can actually see the real contact between the Devonian Carboniferous rocks. Okay, so there is no not much in terms of tectonic deformation between uh, Devonian and Carboniferous strata. Uh, we've done work here, brought students for a long time here. Uh, I did my, my my final year project here back in two thousand two. Yeah, uh, some some reason it has become an obsession. I just uh, go here every year. We bring students every year, and we just try to map it out because it's a very fascinating outcrop. It's very complicated, very challenging to to do work here. Uh, in the early years, it was very hard because exposure was very spotty. We just get uh, uh, some parts here exposed, some parts here exposed. So progress was piecemeal. 2002, 2005, 2014, we get a better map. 2015, then there's Google Earth. We get some satellite imagery. We can uh, make some better maps. But we got the uh, complete exposure of the contact uh, back in, I think it was in 2017. So we were lucky. Uh, lots of uh, coring do done during that year. So we got really nice exposure of all the rocks. And we brought the drone and we mapped everything. And I, we think we have a quite a relatively good understanding and, and picture of uh, of the stratigraphy uh, crossing the Devonian Carboniferous boundary here. Okay, so this is an aerial image using drones. Uh, you can see the, the UM Geology Department uh, van in the north here, and we've overlaid some interpretations here. You have a east-west uh, trending um, normal fault, which has resulted in the uplift of this uh, outcrop actually, right? And yeah, you can uh, you can actually see the contact between um, the Devonian cut rocks, and you have these churches which are early Carboniferous in age. Okay, so this was just uh, uh, we 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 just uh, published this work in the JSM Bulletin a few months back. Okay, so this is the geological map of the Guatsana Hillby uh, location. Okay, so. The carbonates here, this is Silurian uh, going to Devonian, uh, but also intercalated between the Devonian uh, carbonates. You get these thin slivers of black shales containing lots of graptolites and tentaculites, right? So these are early Devonian. So you, actually you get a repeated section. So you have fault faulted contacts between these thin slivers of, 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 of black shales in between the, in, in between the carbonates, right? Sorry. Uh, okay. So then you have a, a contact between carbonates with the church, followed by the clastics dominated uh, unit of the Kuban Pass Formation. So we've done several sedimentary logs. And one is uh, this is section three. This one is section three is here. Okay. Along the fault plane here, we get a nice exposure and covers the, the Devonian part. Uh, and then sections one and two on this side, and also, but the the the, the best section is section four in the in the southern side of the exposure here, where you get a complete succession crossing the Devonian Carboniferous boundary. So the Devonian Devonian Carboniferous boundary is here. Okay. Okay. So this is the this is the location of the section four sedimentary log, and this is the exposure. Uh, so we're younging towards the east and you see these reddish light colored rocks here well bedded these are the carbonates eh? these are the limestones and these are the church overlying the boundary between devonian and carboniferous so you have this church with interbedded uh, slaty shale and then overlaid by what we think are glacial marine deposits Okay, so I put in the stratigraphy here. So you have uh, Sanai limestone, which is Devonian, followed by Telagajato formation, and then the Kubang Pasu formation. All right. So I'll just go one by one through uh, these three uh, stratigraphic units, which cross the Devonian Carboniferous boundary. Okay. So let's go to the Sanai limestone first, this part, yeah? So what is it in terms of uh, sedimentology? Right? So um, in outcrop, the limestones are well bedded, you, but you also see uh, lots of stylolites, 
uh, forming the contact between beds and the color ranges from gray to black in color, uh, black limestone right uh, yeah uh, you also get interbedded centimeter to decimeter thick limestone and also black shields in between okay so we made thin sections and looked at the petrography um, using the dynamic classification what you get here is mudstone and and most, mostly mudstone and waxstone so it's a relatively fi a fine grained limestone okay uh, but in some horizons you get the beds very rich in fossils so it reaches uh, you can call it a, a pack stone or even a grain stone okay? it, it's, uh, the fossil compositions can be very dense sometimes right or yeah in terms of folk classification it is micrite or sparse to uh, back, uh, packed by micrite sorry the fossil composition, uh, the fossil content of a sandy limestone is, yeah, the limestone is rich in fossils, right? but it's mainly in the form of pelagic fossils, lots of uh, uh, free swimming and uh, free swimming organisms and also planktonic organisms. So we have fossils of autoconautiloids, uh, lots of ostracods when you look at it in, in the thin sections, uh, crinoid fragments, uh, crinoid ossicles uh, are, part, uh, are quite common. Also evidence of small brachiopods, and also these uh, very small thin-shelled bivalves, and also fragments of trilobites. Notice here, this is part of a cephalon of a part of a head of a trilobite here, okay. um, and also yeah, uh, thin-shelled bivalves, uh, trilobites, and also lots of conodonts. Okay. Yeah, I should also mention these things here, these conical structures here. Also lots of what we call tentacular toys. So uh, these are mainly planktonic and also nectonic uh, animals, right? So in terms of deposition environments, uh, we have uh, a pelagic limestone. It's fine grain, right? It's fine grain. It's, it's mostly micrite. Uh, no evidence of reworking by high energy events. Uh, then lots of planktonic and also uh, free swimming organisms. So the interpretation is that these were pelagic limestone. Uh, uh, these were deposited in a pelagic environment, right? Uh, fully marine, uh, relatively deep uh, below wave base. So that, there's not much in terms of wave re reworking here. Okay. So the deeper, if you, you want to imagine, it will be the deeper parts of your carbonate platforms. Okay. So yeah, uh, in terms of age, so we, we need to find uh, fossils which are which can really tell us uh, the definite age of this uh, stratigraphic unit, the Sinai limestone. I'm calling here the Sinai limestone. Uh, so we need to rely on things like uh, conodonts, right? So uh, luckily, uh, we found conodonts in 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 these beds here, the Sinai limestone, and they seem to be quite abundant, right? Uh, now, just a little bit of history. Uh, when we first discovered uh, the limestone beds here, uh, originally uh, we thought that these were part of the Silurian rocks because when everybody said, talks about uh, car Paleozoic carbonates in Perlis or Langkawi, oh, it's always the part of the Seto limestone, which is supposed to be Ordovician to Silurian in age, right? Or maybe it just ranges up to to, to the uh, the contact between. Uh, low low uh, between later silurian and earliest devonian right so that was uh, our our first guess this was part just part of the uh, part of the mempelam limestone which is silurian right but yeah we just just out of curiosity we tried we, we took some spot samples of the limestones and brought it back and processed it with acetic acid and tried to extract some conodonts and to our surprise, when we did uh, conodon extraction, this was, this was back in 2002, 2003, uh, the kinds of species that we got were late Devonian in age. So that was uh, quite an exciting time, quite a confusing time, just trying, to, uh, trying to figure out the stratigraphy. Yeah? This was making things complicated. And we suggested the name Sinai Limestone based on the location. This is Sinai Hill B in this case. Yeah? Okay, so yeah, I, I think everybody's familiar with conodonts, right? These are just the, the, the teeth of ancient ancient fish, right? And uh, these fish evolve very rapidly, right? 
so you get so different species have a very very narrow time range to them so we can use them to really constrain the the age of of our rocks okay okay so that was back in 2003 uh, yeah there was a, a little bit of a long hiatus uh, uh, where we stopped doing some studies for a few years right uh but yeah it was uh for earlier, we we just uh, left it at that. It was late Devonian in age, and we were making the interpretation was well, probably Fermanian in age, maybe the, the latest part of Devonian. Uh, but we needed an expert, a content expert, to actually do uh, more detailed work here, more systematic work here. And luckily, uh, around 2011, 2013, we got uh, Professor Aiko Aung as a visiting professor at the Department of Geology, and he's a, a He's a, a paleontologist. A, a, a very his expertise is it also includes uh, conodonts. So what Prof uh, Iko did was again do a very systematic sampling of the Sunday limestone succession and managed to extract around more than one thousand specimens of these uh, these small fish teeth uh, from from the unit. Okay, and from his study, which was published in twenty fourteen. Yes, uh, it shows you that the rock is late Devonian in age. It is late Devonian now. Uh, it's part of the linguiformis zone. So it's not Fermanian, but it's actually a little bit older. And uh, this is uh, Fresnian in age. So this is a, a list of the taxa found there. So uh, species of Ensarodella, uh, Permatolepis, mm, Polygnatus, Icrodes, and Ozacodina, and Belludella. And also, yeah, lots of Palmetolepis linguiformis. So this is part of the linguiformis. So it's confirmed. That these rocks are late Devonian, fresh in age, and part of the linguiformis zone. Okay, so yeah, uh, so yeah, just just uh, tell you these photos were taken using just using uh, macro photography, using stack stack uh, stack focusing rather than SEM. All right, so those were conodonts. Now, we also found uh, other kinds of fossils uh, associated with the conodonts. Uh, some parts of the limestones were rich in these conical shaped uh, micro fossils. They are small, just a few millimeters long, uh, less than one millimeter in diameter cross section. So you have uh, in the shape will be something like this, where they are elongated. But if you make a cross section, they are circular. All right? And they're ornamented with these uh, rings around them, right? So these are tentaculitoids. Okay, they are a very common type of planktonic microorganism, uh, favorite organism, uh, uh, found in Devonian rocks. They're very common, right? And they are known from older rocks uh, of Perdis and Kawi in the Timataso Formation, early Devonian. Inside the black shales, you get um, the Dacryoconerid tentaculitoids. Uh, Novakia aquaria, if you're familiar with uh, Malaysian geology, right? Novakia aquaria is, is very well known if you read all the papers on Perlis and Langkawi. And uh, our first, again, our first guess was, again, uh, we, uh, we thought these were just the same thing, right? So it's just Novakia. Lots of uh, things have been published about that, okay? But then we took a really close look. Even though superficially they are very similar, these are very small. They are smaller compared to the, those uh, species which were found in the lower Devonian. The lower Devonian uh, species go up to something like eight centimeters, uh, eight millimeters long. These are something like three to four millimeters long. Well, these are much smaller, and the shape of the tip is also different. So these are actually not dacryoconerids, but another kind of tentaculitoid. These are what we call homoctonids, right? And in this case, we managed to identify the genus and also a, a possible species to it, Moctonus cf tenui synctus in this case. And happily, this is also consistent with the, the, the age dating we have from the conodonts. This also tells us it's late Devonian and fresh in age. So with more and more data coming in, you know, earlier we we're not really that confident, maybe it was certain limestone and so on. Uh, uh, but now, as the data grows, we can we become more and more confident with our age designation. So these are late Devonian limestones, not part of the, uh, the Silurian uh, Upper Seto limestone or the Mumpalam limestone. Okay, 
Okay, so that's the Sinai limestone. Okay. And overlying in the Sinai limestone is this thin unit of ribbon church. Okay. You get these thin beds of church uh, interbedded between black shale. All right. And this unit is uh, quite uh, widely exposed. You get it exposed here in Perlis and also in Northern Kedah. All right. Uh, some people consider it as the base of a Kubang Pasu formation, but here I, I, I'll use a, a separate term to it. I'll just call it the Telaga Jato formation because, uh, in my opinion, it's distinct enough and it is mappable to be differentiated uh, from the main Kubang Pasu formation. So what we have here is thin centimeter thick interbedded black shale and chert, which is rich in radiolaria. So this is a thin section of the chert, and yeah, it's it's. It's black in color, or it's opaque in under even under thin section, and you see the 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 spheres here. These are your radiolaria. Right? So in terms of age, um, I'll just summarize here. A lot a lot of this work is come not coming from me. This is coming from work by Professor Basi Jasin at UKM and also his students and his colleagues. Right. So I'm just summarizing their findings, and we've done a lot of work there. A lot, a lot really uh, good work there. So I'm just summarizing here. So the radiolaria tell us that this is early Carboniferous in age, Mississippian, uh, maybe late Tornasian to early Vesian in age. So we have Sinai limestone, which is late Devonian, and then we have early Carboniferous at the top. All right. Okay. So notice here also that if you look at the beds here, there's a lot of folding. The beds are strongly folded in some parts, but it also in other parts not really that folded. Okay. Uh, in terms of deposition environments, uh, these have been interpreted by Probasi as continental margin church, yeah? maybe outer shelf to continental rise. So relatively deep marine. Okay, so just another view of the contact between the Sinai limestone and the Telaga Jato formation. Okay, we will look at on this side. Now we are on the opposite side here. So the light colored part here is the limestone. And then these are the folded church. Now, uh, previously, uh, the interpretation for the folded church here was that uh, these were probably slump folds because uh, we were reasoning that uh, the, the underlying beds are not really that deformed, well bedded, and the overlying beds are also not deformed. And you get interformational folds uh, in the middle just associated with uh, the Tlagi Jato formation. So we said, oh, maybe these were just slumps and we have a slope. But uh, now we have better exposure, especially on this side. We notice that the folding actually extends downwards into onto the Sinai limestone. There's slight like kinks at the top of the Sinai limestone. So uh, our thinking, we're thinking uh, more recently, maybe we're not really looking at slumps, but rather it's, 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 just, a, uh, it's just tectonic deformation, right? Uh, for, yeah, folding is extending into the older strata. It could be because of tectonics. Uh, it's just that you get stronger folds, which are more pronounced in the more ductile shale and chert compared to the more brittle carbonates at, at the bottom. So that is why you get that uh, contrast. And this also explains why you don't get the same kind of nice contact in the other uh, DC boundary uh, outcrops. Yeah, it's, it's just that we have, because we have black shale and chert at the bottom, and it is easily deformed compared to the harder sandstones of the Kubang Pasu formation above. Also, yeah, I should also mention uh, the Sinai limestone is also only uh, observed at this outcrop or for some reason. And that is another problem that we need, we need to solve in, in the future. Okay, so moving on. We go to, excuse me, we're going to the younger rocks overlying the church now. So again, we are still at Sinai Hill B. So you have the Sinai limestone at the bottom here. This view is towards the east. Yeah? So Sinai limestone dipping towards the east. You have the black shales and church, but it's like a uh, chateau formation, which is Tornasian in age, early Carboniferous. And sharply over, overlying the church, uh, the rocks of the Kubang Pasu formation, right? So the Kubang Pasu formation is widely uh, widely underlays uh, the whole of Perlis and also in North Kedah. So it's widely distributed. 
It's also widely exposed also. Uh, so in terms of lithology, it is made up of mudstone with interbedded sandstones, which, are, which can be feldspatic and also quartzitic. So you can see the gray colored parts here, the darker parts here are the mudstones. And you see these uh, lighter colored beds are your sandstones. And the beds are also, uh, in this case, dipping towards the east. Okay. Uh, it is abruptly, you have to see the sharp contact between the black shields and chirts here, overlying the Telaga Jato formation here. Okay, so now let's have a look at the sedimentology of uh, the, Kubang, uh, the, the Chepo member, the lowermost part of the Kuban Pasu Commission. I'm calling it the, the Chepo member. Okay. Sorry, is that a question? Yeah? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. So let me. Okay. So let's talk about the sedimentology now of the Chepo member Kuban Pasu Commission. Uh, sorry, Doctor Mio Zulhaimi here from. Oh, Zul. Ah. Yeah. Um. Do Do I ask the questions now or do I ask the questions later? I, I guess you can. If you have anything you want to ask, it's okay. Uh, this is a casual, just a presentation. Uh. Oh, okay. Okay. Great. I'm I'm very interested in the Timataso black shale. Uh, do we know what kind of environment it is? Okay. Uh, okay. But Timataso formation black shales. All right, so if you want to have a specific depth environment, it's going to be a little bit hard. We need to find something analogous to what we see today, right? Um, because we have uh, different kinds of fossils, but everything is planktonic, mm -hmm. it's pelagic. Um, what I can safely say, it is marine, of course. It's, uh, it's more basinal. Okay? These terms are very quite, also quite vague, right? It's, it's basinal and so on. Uh, I think it's probably... Uh, Maybe uh, outer shelf. I see outer shelf, mm -hmm. because because right now we are looking at some uh, some uh, examples and uh, for for uh, the offshore of Selat Melaka and and you know having Timataso is a good black shale uh, candidate for source rock. Just above that is the Sinai limestone. I was wondering how how much can we actually uh, correlate it back to offshore? It's something that we need to you know uh, further study. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I I guess uh, well I think it's it's, it's likely. I, I think um, uh, I, you know better, right? Uh, so uh, uh, you, there has been reports of uh, limestones from from the basement uh, j j below the Malacca Straits, right? Yep. Uh, some of these have been interpreted as uh, Silurian in age, maybe, right? Or even Permian, right? So, yep. yeah, yep. Um, these black shales that we see in Perlis here, they are always associated, they are always intercalated, intercalated between the, the, this, this platform cabinet. They're quite common, it's quite, quite common fascist associated with them. Yeah. And these are the, the remnants of the Cebu Masu block. Uh, yes, this is this is part of Cebu Masu, uh, the, which was uh, this was all from Gondwana, right? It was attached correct. to Gondwana. Correct, correct, correct. Okay, thank you, Doctor Mio. Oh, by the way, uh, do we know you know roughly what kind of uh, thickness that you 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 can actually map for the Timataso? Okay, the Timataso formation, uh, unfortunately, it's not really that thick. Uh, oh. uh, but yeah. Uh, re exposures are very spotty, so it's not really we, we can't really see much. But from what we have seen, it's uh, what uh, the thickest that we've seen is thirty meters. Oh, that's good. Thirty oh, meters is good. good. Okay, okay, okay. I, I didn't know that. Okay. Yeah, thirty so, meters is good. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. So because, because right now, from the seismic that we see, um, we saw uh, in some of the wells we uh, penetrated the limestone at the base of the well. And we are not really sure what kind of limestone is this, and is it uh, equivalent to settled formation, or, or we don't know. And then uh, the seismic below that is very very vague, so we're not really sure what we hit. Yeah, when you when you see the 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 seismic, we're not really sure. We just call it basement. Mm -hmm. We're not really sure if it is basement or not. But uh, over in Indonesia. Uh, if you look at some of the, um, the carbonates, it is almost identical to settled formation. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
yeah so there's a correlation there that needs to be studied further very ah very very interesting project to do yeah exactly ah, exactly ah, ah, exactly. Ah. exactly all right i uh, i leave you to it yeah you can just continue okay okay okay, okay thanks for the question right. okay, okay okay so just a recap so we were here now we've looked at the telaga jato formation sangai limestone here devonian going to carboniferous church now sharply overlain by the clastic beds of the kubang pasu formation so let's have a look at the sedimentology of the kubang pasu formation chepo member the early, the the lowermost part of the of the kubang pasu formation now looking at these paleozoic rocks right uh, sandstones and mudstones right if you've, you've gone to outcrops in perlis kedah even the Kenny Hill formation, also Kati formation of Pera and also around Kuala Lumpur, you might start. You might say, well, these are very old rocks, they're quite folded and so on. I don't really see any sedimentary structures. But what we found out is if you take a really close look and just spend some time there, uh, uh, just staring at the rocks, right? We did a lot of staring at the rocks right, when doing this. And, you can actually see lots of sedimentary structures preserved. Not as one or Sarah. Um, but if you get really deep and scattering, you start to see things coming out. So we found a lot of sedimentary structures associated with the sensor. Things like symmetric ripples. Okay. Um, also cross beds with mud class inside associated with them. Okay. Uh, parallel lamination, also some other more cross beds here. Things that look like harmony cross stratification. Uh, in some outcrops, you even see uh, beds which look like turbidites. They have uh, partial Bauman sequences. Sometimes going from structureless sandstone at the bottom, going to ripple sandstones at the top, going to mudstone. So those might be turbidites. Uh, lots of fluid casts associated at, at the base of, the, the, of these beds. Um, also, the mudstones, if you are lucky uh, to get well-cemented mudstones and you break it apart, you can actually see uh, trace fossils being preserved. And what you see here are these uh, tiny trace fossils here. Uh, this is the ignogenous uh, chondritis. All right. So all of this, all these features here, the sedimentary features and the trace fossils, it tells us that we are in a marine. We were, uh, these were deposited in a marine uh, depth environment. Uh, we think it's probably a prodeltaic to shelf environment uh, where we have these um, wave and current reworked sand bodies, sand, uh, wave and current reworked sands, and also lots of mud. Okay, so uh, we are, probably have a, a quite near to a, sediment, to a sediment supply, a river, and it's probably a delta. Uh, and lots of um, Fasces uh, generated by waves, storms, currents, and possible gravity flows. Right? And the thick mudstone in the Kuban Pasu Formation tells us you have rapid and high rates of deposition. You see a lot, uh, in some beds, you can see load casts right? in, uh, at the base of a bed. Okay, so let's look at the Kuban Pasu Formation in terms of its age. Now, the low part of the Kuban Pasu Formation remember, is very rich in fossils. And this is already well known. Everybody knows this. Uh, 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 lots of studies have been done since the 1960s uh, by, by, by British workers, by Malaysian workers, by Japanese workers on, on the fossil content. Right. So i just show you a few photos here uh, of, of the types of fossils you, you can get uh, in Perlis. So bivalves. This is the genus Posidonia. It's quite common in Perlis and also in North Kedah in the Kuban Pasu Formation. I think it should be the mascot of the, of the state in terms of geology. It's, very, it's so common. People throwing it around. Okay. Uh, you also get lots of different types of trilobites. Albeit they are very small, these trilobites here. Um, corals, tabulate corals, rugos corals, and lots of different types of brachiopods with lots of different uh, styles of ornamentation. Um, there's also ammonoids, but uh, they haven't been really that studied in, in the past. So we, we, we're just starting to study them and we got some new, new genera and species uh, being identified and published. 
So previous work always tells us uh, these rocks, uh, the Chepo member is early Carboniferous. We agree with that. Some say it's most, maybe it's Tornasian, but looks like uh, uh, the ammonoids that we found uh, give a more narrow age range. These are most likely to be Vizian. It's still, it's still inside the inside the early Carboniferous, but it's just slightly younger compared to previous age designations. Huh? So early Carboniferous, uh, late Vizian. This is based on the discovery of ammonoids. Uh, this is Goniatitis, nice sutures. So we can actually know the species, in the, uh, know the genus at least in this case. Um, then Dalepinoceras. Okay. And also the species Peradero, it's hard to pronounce, uh, Peradaraelitis tuntungensis. So this is a new species from, uh, this is a new species uh, from Pau in Perlis. Okay. So yeah, that was quite a nice discovery. And a lot of these discoveries were made by the students. I'm quite happy to see that. Uh, uh, we're doing this, this discoveries here. Okay, so we have a diverse marine shelly fauna, brachiopods, corals, bryozoa, mollusks, echinoderms, arthropods, uh, and the index fossils tell us that this is early Carboniferous age and late Vizian. I just want to say one thing here. Now, uh, the Kubang Pasu formation can be correlated to rocks in Langkawi, where they are called the Singer formation. And we have age equivalent rocks uh, to the Chepo member in Langkawi, they're called, uh, they're called the Langun Red Beds, right? And they're uh, also uh, well published, lots, lots of papers on that, lots of books on that. Uh, but yeah, uh, previous workers always state that um, it is late Devonian in age. But I just want to state that the fossil content between the, uh, the fossil content of the Chepo member and the Langun Red Beds of Langkawi, they are exactly the same. We're talking about the same rocks, just a different name and different location. So the Langur Red Bed should also be the, uh, it should also be late Devonian, it should also be early Carboniferous in age. Okay. Okay, so another thing that we found out is that we have lots of these features uh, uh, which are a little bit strange. Yeah. Uh, for one thing, we have these isolated pebbles inside the mudstones and also some of the polysorted sandstones floating inside these rocks here. Right. So these are drop stones. Yeah. And what is interesting here, uh, sometimes you also get layering which is warped or deformed by these uh, pebbles here. Okay. So these are interpreted as glacial marine drop stones. They're falling down from melting icebergs. They just fall down and they are deforming the layers below here. All right. Uh, these are very yeah you can find these are very common in the outcrops of Perlis of the Kuban Pasu formation. Um, they are also always associated with these rhythmically layered sand and um, uh, rhythmic, uh, rhythmically alternating sand and mud layers, right? And uh, we think that these are these might be um, valve-like rhythmites where you have these maybe daily changes in melting of the iceberg, so you get sometimes you get. Uh, coarser grains being deposited and sometimes you get these finer grains being deposited and also these larger grains just falling down and sinking into these layers. All right, so we have nice evidence for uh, glacial marine conditions and these are, these are closely associated with the marine fossils that I've been talking about in the previous slide. Okay, so these are not uh, found in, in other parts of the outcrop. They're just uh, above it or just beside our, glacial, uh, our fossils here. All right. Uh, also, we also get these uh, polysorted mudstones with lots of coarser grains inside them floating around and also some larger pebbles inside. And these appear to be rain out diamictites where you, you get lots of, uh, lots of classic material just uh, falling from suspension as the icebergs melt. Okay, so our interpretation is that these are the oldest known glacial marine deposits in Malaysia. Okay, so these are Vizian in age early Carboniferous. Uh, the origin is that these are uh, interpreted as ice rafted sediments deposited by melting icebergs or disintegrating ice sheets migrating northwards from Gondwana into more temperate waters of Cebu Masu during the uh, late early Carboniferous. Okay, So our drop stones are mainly made up of sandstones, these are sandstones, and also uh, pebbles made up of quartz. 
Okay. So yeah, uh, glacial marine deposits are well known from the Singa Formation, right, in Langkawi. But we have to remember that uh, when we talk about these glacial marine deposits with these large uh, pebbles and boulders in southern Thailand and also in in Langkawi, uh, these are much younger deposits. These are early Permian in age, based on associated uh, brachiopods, right? Um, yeah, and associated with the uh, late Paleozoic uh, Gondwana glacial epoch, 350 to 250 million years ago. So ours is relatively much younger, right? a few tens of million years younger compared to this. Okay, so going back to this photo here of the outcrop at uh, Sanai Hill B. So what you have here, late Devonian Fresnian carbonates abruptly overlain by Tonesian Chert, which is then ab abruptly overlain by uh, Vizian uh, glacial marine deposits of the Kubang Pasu Formation. So, the contact between the Sinai limestone and the Telaga Jato formation chert is a paraconformity. We don't see any evidence of uh, erosion. No, uh, doesn't mean that it doesn't have any erosion. It does that we don't see an irregular surface, right? It's a nice bedding plane, right? But you have an age gap of around 25 million years gone. Okay. The Ferminian, the latest Devonian, is not preserved here. We thought it was, but no, uh, all, all this is fresh then in age. So a 25 million year gap. So uh, this, uh, this is a paraconformity. Okay. So the contact between uh, the Devonian Carboniferous boundary uh, in, in Perlis appears to be a, a, a paraconformity, an unconformity. And also you have this sharp uh, change from cherts here, uh, uh, deeper cherts into shallower um, shallower de deposits of the Kuban Pasu formation here. And uh, this is also likely to be an unconformity, but we need to do much more further study on this contact here. We'll be focusing more on this part. But yeah, an abrupt fascist change and abrupt environmental change. Most likely it's an unconformity. All right. So what we have in Perles is this. This is from the Guaxana outcrop. Devonian rocks. There's, going, there's an age gap in the middle Devonian here, where you have the, when the, uh, the Timataso formation is overlaid by the Sinai limestone, which is late Devonian. And then you have another unconformity at the top here between the Devonian rocks and the Carboniferous rocks. And it's, it appears to be that this unconformity is widespread. It's a regional unconformity throughout, uh, throughout the Western Belt of Peninsular Malaysia. All right? In the Western Belt. So it's, it's observed in Satun in Thailand. Where you have uh, early Devonian rocks sharply overlain by early Carboniferous rocks. You have a, a, a much larger gap here. Uh, also in the other outcrops in Perlis, again, it's just that you don't see the Sinai limestone, but there's a gap between Devonian and Carboniferous. Um, also, a uh, very well studied Devonian Carboniferous boundary section uh, was described by Professor Ian Melkaf. Uh, again, that was an earlier study. And in the in, in Pera area in Chemo, okay, so and also in Kampa and Batu Gajah, yeah? so what again? But but in this case, uh, all the rocks are carbonates, but you see also a stratigraphic break between Devonian and Carboniferous rocks, and we can also infer an unconformable contact uh, for the Paleozoic rocks in 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 the Selangor Kuala Lumpur area. Um, it's not really that definite here because what, what you have is um, um, the Kajang Shis at the bottom, which is early Devonian in age, and then it is overlain by Church of the Dunkil Beds, um, which might be part of the Candy Hill Formation, and which contains Carboniferous uh, Redularia. Right? So it appears to be uh, an unconformity also in the Selangor and Kuala Lumpur area here, because we have no recorded uh, late Devonian rocks being preserved there. Okay. Now, when we look at, in terms of global record, we also see that this Devonian Carboniferous unconformity also occurs in many sections throughout the world. So it's not just in Malaysia, but it's also it's, it's a global unconformity. And if you read the papers, it it is uh, it correlates to an end Devonian eustatic sea level fall. There was a global sea level fall at the end of Devonian. 
So just to summarize why, uh, just some explanations of why do you get this unconformity uh, at the Devonian Communist boundary. What we know is that there was an abrupt, uh, significant uh, sea level change. Yeah? It's a sea level fall, yeah? to be more specific. Right? And yeah, uh, it appears to be associated with fluctuations in climate uh, where you have these uh, periods of glaciations uh, and also interglacial periods in between. Um, Sibu Masu, uh, the Gondwana Drive terrain, which also includes the Western Belt of Peninsula Malaysia, is interpreted to be to have been located along the margins of Gondwana here, right? Very near to Australia or maybe India here, right? And yeah, what you get during the late Paleozoic, during the Carboniferous and Permian, is that you have expansion of these ice sheets, lots of uh, lot, uh, very widespread uh, glaciations. Uh, notice here, mapped here by Professor Melkaff here on, on his uh, paleogeographic map here, uh, ice sheet, uh, a widespread ice sheet uh, on, on the continent of Gondwana during, during the late Paleozoic. Um, so associated with the uh, periods of glaciation, you get eustatic sea level fall because water, seawater is being trapped inside the ice. So the volume of the oceans is decreasing. So you get an, a global sea level fall. Okay. So there's a lot of discussion regarding why we get uh, these uh, glaciation events in time. Um, some say it's because of the emergence of land plants during the Paleozoic, during the Carboniferous, results in increased atmospheric oxygen and carbon burial. So you get a colder climate. So you get a growth uh, and expansion of your glacial ice sheets. Uh, when you get larger ice sheets, you increase planetary albedo. There's going to be a reflection uh, of, of sunlight. You get a feedback loop. Your glacial sheets it gets colder and your glacial sheets become much larger. Okay. So you get these fluctuations. You get, sometimes you get glaciers, sometimes it gets warmer. And so you get these cycles. We get, get periods between you have glacial marine deposits and sometimes you don't get glacial marine deposits in or on the western belt of Peninsula Malaysia. Okay, so I'm almost near the end. So just to summary, a nice summary picture here again. So what we get at the Sanai outcrop here, Guat Sanai outcrop, in Perlis, Devonian, late Devonian carbonates, and then you have a paraconformity uh, with sharply overlying Tornesian chirts uh, of, uh, of the Telaga Jatuh Formation, sharply overlain by glacial marine deposits of the Kubang Pasu Formation. And it appears to be that the, the reason you get these unconformities and these very rapid sea level changes, it is associated with the uh, late Paleozoic Ice Age. So you have uh, N Devonian, uh, global eustatic sea level fall associated, uh, interpreted to, to be associated with uh, with cold climates and glaciation, uh, followed by eustatic sea level rise during the earliest uh, Carboniferous. You get uh, these chirps being deposited. Then another relative sea level, uh, another eustatic sea level fall, or maybe relative, I'm not sure on this one because we need to do further study on, on this contact here, resulting in an uh, unconformity and then deposition of a thick succession of glacial marine deposits during the Vizian. Okay, so this is my final slide. Uh, just conclusions. Eh? So uh, I just want to say that we have a well-preserved Devonian Carboniferous boundary exposed at Guat Sanai Perlis. I hope it's still there. I haven't been there for almost two years now because of PKP. Yeah? Um, so you also get abrupt changes in fasces across the DC boundary. It's very, very dramatic changes going from carbonates to clastics, uh, deep marine to shallow marine uh, to glacial marine and so on. Right? So yeah, very dramatic changes uh, across the Devonian Carboniferous boundary. We have an unconformable contact between upper Devonian and lower Carboniferous strata. A second unconformity, possible unconformity between Carboniferous Chirts and overlying glacial marine deposits. Um, abrupt changes in depth setting may have been caused by global eustatic sea level changes. These abrupt changes in eustatic sea level are closely associated with the onset of the late Paleozoic Ice Age, which started in the late Devonian, uh, early Carboniferous, and ended in the late Permian. I forgot to show you one more thing, just one more thing. Eh? So these are locations of other glacial marine deposits, which are early Carboniferous in age. So you get 
parts of South America, you get also uh, Vizian or Tunisian uh, glacial marine deposits with tillites. Also in parts of Australia, and now we also have them in, in, in Malaysia here. Okay, so that's the end of my talk. I just stop here with some photos. I just want to say here, I have lots of people to thank actually for this work. And uh, we had uh, several grants from the University of Malaya. And uh, most recent 2013, uh, research, uh, quite, quite, a, quite a generous grant in 2013. So we did a lot of work during the, uh, using those funds. Also uh, like to acknowledge the Ministry of Higher Education for an FRGS grant back in 2014, supporting our work here. Lots of findings that we, we found out from the, using these grants here. And a big thank you to, to lots of students who followed us in, in the field. Uh, some of them have co-authored papers with us uh, and happy to see them progress in, the, in, in their work again, and have progress be, be beyond studying. Eh? Uh, yeah, big thank you also to, to, to many friends who have accompanied uh, me to, to, to the field. Prof. Lee Chai Ping, my previous supervisor, Prof. Aiko Aung, and lots of other uh, geologists and paleontologists uh, from Southeast Asia and also from beyond. Okay, uh, thanks. Um, any questions? Ke? Oh, Prof. Lee was there. Uh, George Ong has uh, uh, raised his hand. Okay. Maybe we can have a question. Yes, uh, thank you, uh, Iskandar. Is that right? <laughs> yep, yep. Okay. Uh, hi, Dr. Mio uh, Ong from uh, Hello. Jonas. Oh, oh. Hi. Uh, okay. It was a very nice presentation. Uh, very interesting. Uh, well, okay. A uh, few outcrops. It's, also, it's always good to see uh, hard rock. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, just, thanks, Ong. Yeah. yeah uh, just some, uh, my observation and clarification. Uh, when I look at your slide on this uh, regional uh, regional stratigraphic cross section, uh, where you have shown uh, the quite a big gap of uh, unconformity there, the age gap there. Then mm -hmm. in the locality Sana, yeah, Goa Sana, if I'm not wrong, there is a limestone which is sitting in the middle of the unconformity. So mm -hmm. there's something uh, very interesting. Uh, what kind of a, a tectonic event or mechanism that uh, causes that uh, limestone to occur in between that uncovermity? Yeah, this light. Okay. All right. So. No. Oh, well, okay. Okay. Um, so this is basically a monostratigraphic chart. Okay. okay. So what I'd like to show you here is this. Uh, we, yeah, it's, it's a bit of a problem, yeah. Did I put it on mute then? Uh, Can you hear Now, okay, yes. Just now was a uh, bit breaking. Yeah, now it's fine. All right. Okay, so maybe I, I touch the microphone or something. Okay. All right. Okay. So... Yeah, there seems to be a problem with the... Uh... Going back to this... Uh... Uh, I think, uh, Dr. Mio, I think you are muted. Uh? Uh, yeah, there's something wrong. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, Dr. Mio's microphone is getting muted for some reason. Yeah, you have to unmute. Okay, so can you hear me? Uh, now, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, so I think what I'm trying to show you here is that there's actually, in this case, there's more than one unconformity. So this is a chronostratigraphic chart. So what you have here was an older uh, event. Uh, most likely uh, an older event would be in the early or middle Devonian. You have an unconformity which resulted in this unconformity here. But later, you had another event which resulted in a younger unconformity during the late Devonian. So what happened is that you actually have a merging of these surfaces. So that's why mm -hmm. it's not like this. So it's, yeah, it's, uh, which, um, this is what we have right now, but it, 
Mm. Most likely, there's going to be more unconformities here. Yeah, it's, it's because you have lots of things happening during that time. But yeah, uh, what I'm showing to show you here is that it's not just a single unconformity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's quite, uh, I mean, uh, very interesting. Uh, you know, some suddenly there is a, there is a one 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 sudden limestone sitting there. Yeah, probably mm -hmm. it's a multi unconformity. Yeah. Sure. Uh, the last the last one is um uh it, you have you have shown that uh some correlation that is probably related uh, to the drop of the sea level mm -hmm. so i'm wondering uh, that locality five and six there is a limestone there usually limestone uh it grows on the shallow water probably on the paleo high right mm -hmm. suddenly this locality five and six there is a limestone there which is coinciding with the fall of the sea level. So uh, I'm, I'm not sure how, how that limestone carbonate could have thrived during that time. Yeah, if it's a drop of the sea level. Okay, Ong. Okay, yeah. that's, that's a good question. Uh, but um, this one, I, I, um, I need to quote a word from Professor Ian Metcalf here. Huh? That, uh, hopefully I'm, I, I'm, I'm saying things correctly. Um, but uh, for the Perak part, these limestones here have been interpreted as uh, deeper fasces, which are deeper marine uh, deposits. Uh, so in this case, mm. uh, when you have unconformities here, uh, what you have, uh, you know, you have an age gap, and then you have uh, a deposit which, is, which has been interpreted as a turbidite going down the slope and bringing in um, uh, old, uh, bringing in reworked conodonts uh, at the top. So it, it is still an unconformity. There is an age gap, but it's in deeper marine fasces. Oh, I see. So it's a, okay. So it's a rework carbonate. Yeah, probably being deposited. Ah, uh, yes. Post, post that uh, unconformity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If okay. I remember well from paper, uh, Ian Rickles' paper. Uh. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, thanks a lot, doctor. Okay. Uh, very okay. good sharing. Oh. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. Hope to see you next time. <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Dr. Masa has raised his hand as well. So, oh, okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Masa. Question from him. Can you hear me? Uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, okay. I uh, just uh, um, uh, directed at some comments for the J George's um, pointing. I think Kantan ones, uh, um, I think last time in interpreted to be faulting, not really unconformity, those things, you know. And in Kantan limestone, they, uh, Supposed to be no those you know silicic plastic, but basically carbonate. Even though there are some time gaps in there, those faulting comes in a parallel bedding. Bedding is almost vertical, then faulting comes almost parallel to bedding. So it's not like unconformity actually. Oh, okay, okay. Masa, I, mm -hmm. I, I, yeah, I yeah, it's okay. Mm. And uh... just um, my yeah, um, just. A Follow up question, a similar question. Um, so, sorry, I, I'm so just to let me check. Um, your interpretation is that the, this DC boundary, the boundary between Sanai limestone and the Tornasian black shell, uh, radio radian chart, that is conformable or paraconformity, you say. It is uh, it's unconformable, I, but it is in the para conform, You think unconformity. Mm -hmm. This case, the, the, the exact DC boundary is missing, isn't it? Erode, eroded. Well, uh, is it? Okay, so yeah. if you want, uh, well, it is a DC boundary. Yeah. Uh, but if no. you want to be more uh, specific, saying that you want to have a uh, latest Fermanian overlying Tunisian, in that case, uh, we don't have that. But it is a uh, boundary between the bone and carbon rocks. Eh? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let me collect. Let me collect to this. Okay. Um. 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 In 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 geor Um. Basically, this case we cannot really say this is a DC boundary. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but we can say it's a boundary between, uh, you know, the Devonian rock and the you know, early carboniferous rock, but uh, better not say this This is a DC boundary. It's, uh, when we say DC boundary or CP boundary, this um, has to be 
stratigraphic. It is a yeah. stratigraphic boundary. Yeah, yeah there, there are some uh, similar yeah. problems. Kind of, I take, I, okay, I point this at mistake. Mm -hmm. um, but you, we, we, we cannot say this is the, the straight DC boundary. You know what I mean? It's kind uh, of international, you know, thing, actually. Uh, I, I'm going to disagree on that one, but we can discuss that, that one further later for that yeah, one. They're similar, okay, like PT boundary mm. everywhere, they're often reported, and then that the, often it's a uh, fault boundary. Mm -hmm. Then um, in it's uh, not, you know, it's we can we cannot say this is um, uh, it's not my opinion actually. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, never mind. Okay. Um, then, yeah, I have a similar question. Okay, Sanai paraconformity, you think, the, on top of Sanai limestone? Mm -hmm. Why this is not a uh, fault thing? Um, because, uh... so, yeah, the Sanai limestone, like uh, the unconformity is your interpretation. Then yes. remember that uh, actually uh, some people, uh, particularly those UK people, mm -hmm. Consider that the Sanai limestone is uh, the block, limestone block. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. So that, like Georgie pointed out, it's actually also reasonable in one side. Yeah. And my, I have a similar question. Mm -hmm. Limestone deposited, then we have a black shale with radiolariums mm -hmm. on top immediately, uh, unconformity. Unconf paraconformity, right? Normally, paraconformity, remember, is paraconformity in a shallow, shallow setting <clears throat> due to sea level, frequent sea level changes. Doesn't mean parallel unconformity is paraconformity. So, this is a deep water unconformity because of the tornado, you know, deep, water, deep water sediments overlie. Mm -hmm. But your interpretation is depositional. So right. limestone, mm -hmm. normally like unconformity means anyway that uh, that the erosional means uh, uplift or syllable drops. Mm -hmm. right? Then limestone on top of limestone now has unconformity in your interpretation, then immediately overlaying with the deep water sediments. Mm -hmm. um, unconformity, paraconformity it's difficult, it's difficult to, to you know, imagine this depositional uh, change. Okay, limestone is a shallow marine, basically, basically. And got the un slight uplift to get the erosion, then has to go to the deep water to get the deep water sediments. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, this lithological change is so abrupt, of course. It's abrupt. Mm. Mm. Then that, the, but you are saying that this is, uh, you know, uh, depositional. Uh, you know what I mean? <laughs> okay. Sorry, I, I don't get one. That one. So mm. okay. Then that if this is depositional, then this limestone eroded limestone top has to go to a deep water environment, either by a rapid sea level rise or subsidence. Mm -hmm. Then you can have a distornation, you know, deep water sediment. But the, before distornation, deep water sediments come, mm -hmm. then they are, we expect that there should be some, you know, conform of like conglomerate, you know, could be non marine or shallow marine sediments before this deep water come, if this is unconformity or something like that. You know that that's for that's why some other side people in other another side think this is um, limestone lens block, uh, slightly exotic. Mm, uh, mm. Uh, this is one just in interpretation. Yeah, okay, well, just another opinion from another side. Okay, no, I take note of that. Uh, and this is an limestone. Um, basically, you are close to the uh, FF boundary. Right? Uh, FF, do you mean fresh name for minion? Yeah. Not, yeah, roughly close to FF, FF boundary. 
with okay, color okay. on. Is that mm -hmm. in this picture? Mm -hmm. This picture, is, yes. In, in within this picture, it's FF boundary, in there. Uh, okay, so uh, we don't have any Fermilion being, being being preserved. So looking at the data again, it, everything is Fresnian in this case. Fresnian. Oh, mm, everything is Fresnian. Fresnian directly overlain by Tonesian. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. okay. But yes, uh, it would be nice to resample the topmost beds. Be so Fermilion so. is missing again. So the most of the Fermilion is eroded. Mm -hmm. It's a is that the idea? Isn't it? Uh, the contact the uh, the contact is sharp. This is I can say based on our uh, based on our evidence is like this. First, we have an abrupt shift in fascis. Second, we have a contact which is sharp. There is no evidence of things like a silicon. It is just to be conformal, it just was from and so where they where they share the top. Yeah. But we have an age gap which is 25 million years. So based on all this evidence, we interpret an unconformity. And because yeah, but the there must be a big no unconformity if there is no uh if most of Famenia is missing, yeah, there should mm -hmm. be an yes. unconformity, big unconformity. Yeah. So this case, you know, it's all it, yeah, okay. Mm. But my yeah, I just uh, tell you that uh, we cannot really say this is DC boundary. Yeah, locally yes, but uh, it's uh, misleading to say this is DC boundary. Mm. Okay, yeah. Okay, I, I think no. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Mm. So, uh, any other questions? No, no. Okay, thank you, Zul. Yeah, uh, there's been a few comments in the chat uh, about, uh, um, um, you know, you know about, uh, 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 you know about the, you know, uh, uh, Timataso formation and and rocks in the, uh, uh, you know, Sri Sri Malacca. So, uh -huh. um, I think you, All right. you know, if there's enough interest, maybe we can organize a seminar on this. You, you know, get uh, you know, uh, 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 Zohaimi and you know, uh, you know, some of the others. And uh, it'll be interesting to do. We don't kind of. It'll be interesting to do. Man. If they interest there, uh, they interest in the uh, in the Malacca Straits. Uh, any anything, any project trying to correlate those rocks. Yeah, maybe we have some some of examples that'd be very nice. Uh, you know, to Sumatra as well, maybe. Mm -hmm. You know, invite uh, some but uh, maybe uh, Indonesians perhaps. Mm, okay. Huh. Maybe a good idea. So, uh, if anyone's interested in that, you know, you know, uh, you know, uh, drop me an email. And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll like that. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Uh, uh, also, Nila, um, uh, if uh, you know, for, for those who join late, uh, if you can, uh, please go into the chat, uh, leave your name and your uh, affiliation. Uh, so that I can get a record of uh, uh, you know of attendees, and uh, you know I can write a report about this, uh, you know uh, you know about the talk. Uh, uh, thank, thank you, Doctor uh, Doctor Eva. Okay, uh, Nila. Uh, I I guess. Uh, okay, so um, yeah. Uh, before we end the talk. Uh, uh, if, uh, if if any of the uh, attendees have not yet put their name and, and information in the in the chat, please please do so now. Um, I'll go ahead and uh, you know I, I'll, I'll go ahead and record that and then I'll, I'll write a report for the for the Okay, thank you, thank you, thank you all, thank you, Prof. Lidari. Uh, I think it's a uh... Our kids uh, I think it's our kid. Yeah. Thank you. Thank, thank you uh, for, for, for participating today. Thank you for your time for listening. Uh, yeah. So I hope you, uh, I, I, I had fun uh, sharing this, uh, some photos from the field. Uh, no.
And if you have any further questions, uh, you can uh, free free to email me. Uh. Yeah. Oh, thanks, Prof. Wan. Uh. Okay, I guess um, if there are no more questions and uh, 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 no more comments, uh, uh, um, I guess we can go ahead and uh, wrap it up perhaps. Okay, uh, thanks, Dr. Masa. We'll, we'll make um, Okay, thanks, Avalon. Yeah, thanks everybody for for showing up. We'll uh, you know uh, we'll, we'll try to organize more of these talks. Uh, uh, I, I guess I'm in charge of uh, you know organizing talks for you know uh, that have uh, this uh, uh, you know um, that have to do with uh, regional geology and tectonics. So we'll you know, uh, 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 hopefully you know if, if you know anyone who would like to give a talk, please please let me know. Uh, you know uh, you know I will uh, you know I'll, I'll I'll go ahead and organize it. Okay, so 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 again, thanks everybody. Uh, we'll uh, um, I guess we had up to seventy people uh, you know participating just now. Um, if there are no more questions, I, I guess I'll go ahead and end, end the session now. Um, okay, thanks uh, thanks everyone for showing up. Okay, uh, Bye. Was, was quite interesting.